Google fired this guy. This is unbelievable. This guy, James Damore, he writes a piece basically saying that women are different than men and that may have something to do with why they don't get the same tech jobs that men get and why they don't rise to positions of power. Women care more about uh, you know, it's an internal memo. It's like 10 pages long. He said he was in favor of diversity. He didn't want to get in anybody's way. Obviously, this doesn't apply to all women. It doesn't apply to all men. It's just a general statement about the general nature of men and women that women tend to care more about people and men tend to, tend to care more about things that men care a lot about status and have this drive to be high status that women don't have. Women have more balanced views of life. I mean, if you ask me, but the thing is, we have different views of life. We're men and women. That is what one of the beauties of life is one of the things that makes life beautiful for most of us. I think that that is one of the consolations of living the difference between men and women, as the French used to say, uh, you know, vive la différence, they used to say, and I don't, I have no, I think that means I surrender in French, but maybe that <laughs> it's something but anyway, here, here is the thing that, you know, they, so they fire the guy. They find the guy and they fire him. What was the, They had this wonderful line. They fired him. He violated, violated our code of conduct and crossed the line by advancing harmful gender stereotypes in our workplace. Do not advance harmful gender stereotypes in our workplace. Unbelievable. Unbe he also accused them, by the way, of silencing conservative opinions. Uh, <laughs> I guess I, I do. silencing conservative opinions, you're fired. I think, that, I think that's kind of a dead giveaway that he had something to say. Look, the thing is, women have been men and women have been shown again and again to have different tendencies, different predilections, and it's a bell curve. Obviously, there are women who are more like men, men who are more like women, but it's a bell curve in general. Men uh, have a better. Uh, time manipulating objects in space, which sounds like a small thing, but it actually is a big thing when it comes to engineering in their minds. Men are more capable to envision objects in space. They are better at abstract reasoning uh, than women are. The hilarious part about this, Amanda Presto wrote a piece about this on The Daily Wire. Some of the women were so upset. Some of the women at Google were so upset by the memo that they stayed home. <laughs> OK, it's like acting like women, you know, I mean, it's like it's not it's not that big a deal. The women are too upset to go in. They just they just, you know, it just was, were too emotional to go in. But the thing is, I mean, here's the thing. This you want to see I'm, I'm going to when I at the end of this at the end of this conversation I'm going to this is a pile of horse dung but at the end of the conversation I'm going to get to the pony underneath the horse dung because there is a pony underneath the horse dung but if you want to see the, you remember Jonah Goldberg's wonderful book liberal fascism it had this cover do we have the cover of his book with the the, that image that he, yeah, there it is, the smiley face with Hitler. You want to see this smiley Hitler face come to life, okay? This is woman, Megan Smith, who used to be a, Barack Obama's chief technology officer, okay? Now, remember yesterday we were talking with Knowles about how NASA under Obama was directed to for Muslim outreach, right? This is a big deal. It's like, and I believe, you know, if we could send a Muslim to the moon, we could send them all to the moon, right? That's, that's, no, that's a terrible, terrible thing to say. Don't laugh at that, Austin. You only encourage me. But but here's the face. Here, So here is Barack Obama's chief technology officer. You want to see that smiley fascist face come to life. Here she is talking on Bloomberg TV about the evil of having opinions that disagree with her. But it's there, it's insidious, and so many uh, people, women of all races, men of color, experience what we, what I call a death by a thousand paper cuts. You know, this, this stuff is personal, it sort of comes at you, uh, it's insidious, and it's all around the culture. And then when you're getting it, it's so personal, it's, and it's agile, it's, it's hard to understand it as a pattern, but it's almost class action if you can see the pattern. It's a, it's a class action, it's this class of damaging to have opinions, that, you know, to have opinions that are not the mainstream opinion opinion that are not the opinion that Google wants to sell you. It's damaging to people. People, you know, they need their safe space. They need their trigger warnings. So the, the, just to continue on this like smiley face fascist rampage, the interviewer at Bloomberg, listen to the question she asks. She, she says, set us straight, set the science straight here. Look, you're an engineer yourself. Uh, for anybody out there who believes that there are biological reasons uh, for the underrepresentation of women in engineering, please uh, put this to rest. 
Yeah, it's it's a lot of mythology. I was lucky to go to MIT in mechan mechanical engineering, and uh, Chuck Vest, who was president of the university, ran a study with a lot of the university in the 90s. And one of the things he wrote at the intro of that is uh, when they showed all the discrimination that was happening, both who gets recorded in history, who gets what promotions, who gets what lab sizes, who gets what kind of uh, funding for their research, etc. He said, I always thought it was part myth and part reality. I said, I've learned from this study that it's almost all reality. And we really need to work on this and change this because, of course, we want all of our talent. We want to play the whole American team. The whole American team, that smiley face there. So don't have opinions or you're off the American team. We want the whole American team except for Damore. We want the whole American team except for conservatives. We want the whole American team except for people who believe in what they see with their own eyes. And in fact, what the real studies say, which is not what she says there at all. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But first, I just want to remind you that August is underwear month. So uh, you're going to be gabbing your underwear tree and you'll have, you know, gifts under the, you know, unseen underwear carols. You know, that's that's what we do, right? And you, you'll have box gifts under the underwear tree and you will want to give people underwear. And that's why you want to go to Me Undies. Me Undies, the pirate under, Me Undies, are the pirate underwear. is <laughs> to celebrate. Me Undies is making it easier than ever to try the world's most comfortable underwear by giving you a risk-free guarantee all through this month, all national underwear month long if you don't love your me undies they are free and you will love me they're made of this stuff i you know they sent me some so i could test them they're made out of this stuff lensing micro modal rhymes with pal micro modal it is softer than cotton naturally sustainably sourced it's it is three times softer than cotton and you can feel it there really is a, a big difference it's natural breathable eco friendly fabric extruded from austrian beech trees right and it is actually inhibits odor and as i said this is why austrians can creep up on you because they you can't smell them coming they're just coming so no stinky undies just soft cool and cozy me undies and now until august 31st the end of national underwear month you can get 20 percent off your first pair plus free shipping at meundies.com slash clavin <laughs> it's spelled k l a v a n meundies.com slash clavin meundies.com slash Clavin. They have all these different designs. It's really cool. I mean, they're really fun. You can go on, go on the website and just look at them because you will see that they're really different underwear. You can get them black and gray. I'm kind of conservative, so that's what I did. But you can also get all kinds of designs. And uh, they are especially geared, by the way, to men and women. So they're especially comfortable all around. Going back to smiley face Hitler over here, you know, she's <laughs> saying this stuff. This is the way they always say this. It's a complete myth. It's total myth. So Steven Pinker is a science writer that I really admire really good science writer and he points out the fact that it's just it just ain't so that the datum as he calls them the data that come out show that women you know there's this thing called that sometimes called it the jackie robinson effect there have been times when women were barred from doing things there have been time when people were barred from doing things because of their race just like today through affirmative action asians are barred from getting into ivy league schools they cut back on the number of asians so they can let other minorities uh, come in and when you take those bars away the minute you open the door the people come flooding in sometimes it takes time for them to rise up to the level they need to rise up to but they come flooding in the jackie robinson effect let a black guy play baseball suddenly he said, hey, you know, these, there are plenty of great black athletes and they should join the game. And so that, that very quickly corrects itself. With feminism, that doesn't happen because there's things that women like to do better than other things and things that men like to do better than other things. It's that simple. And things that men and women are better. You know, it's, it's insane that these people believe in evolution which has one purpose. It has one purpose, the reproduction of the race, right? That's all evolution cares about is who reproduces. So you're not going to make women good at the things, you know, how come women can tell if you've eaten a cookie when you're three blocks away? You know, I mean, that's, that's what they're good at. They are good at doing things that, that are mother things and guys are good at doing things that keep mother and child alive. So Pinker points out that they're always, he's, they're always talking like this is 
absolutely no proof to set us straight. Remember the interview on Bloomberg says set us straight. And Pinker says, you know, I've taken many controversial positions over the years. And as a member of Homo sapiens, I think I'm right on all of them. But I don't think that in any of them, I would say there is not a shred of evidence for the other side, even if I think the evidence favors one side. I would not say that the other side can't even make a case for their position, even if I think that their case is not as good as the one I favor. And as for saying that a position is as conclusive as any finding in science, as this is what the women say, the feminists say, well, we're talking about social science here. This statement would imply that the extreme nurture position on gender differences is more conclusive than, say, the evidence that the sun is at the center of the solar system. So in other words, what he's saying is we're not sure about some of this stuff. We're still finding it out. But this attempt to shut people down shows, demonstrates fear. And here's what Pinker says the data show. The datum is a gender difference in the physical uh, sciences, engineering, and mathematics. And I think if you look at the range of professions, uh, the size of the sex discrepancy is predicted by how much spatial cognition and how much abstract mathematical reasoning each of those jobs uh, requires. Um, in terms of the um, effects of parents' expectations, um, there, I think there was a, a sense starting in the 1970s, that the model for development is that as the, the twig is bent, so grows the branch. That very subtle differences in parents' perceptions early in life can have a, a lasting effect. You aim the child in a particular direction, and you'll see the effect years later. Um, I think now there's an enormous amount of research spearheaded by the behavioral genetics revolution that that is not true, that there are effects of parenting, uh, parental expectations, parental treatment on young children when they're in the home, and that in every study, uh, uh, short of outright uh, abuse or neglect, those effects peter out. In other words, you know, it's not nurture, it's not the society, it's not what you're being told, it's who you are, it's a part of who you are. I mean, there is no society on earth where men and women do the same thing. It just doesn't exist. So here, back to smiley-faced Hitler, here's Megan Smith's answer to that. Here's what we can do instead, though. Uh, we need to have the priority up and directly address these kinds of challenges when they come and help these engineers evolve. You know, they, they are misguided and uh, they're destructive to their colleagues. It's, it causes people to leave the industry and it's bad for shareholder value. You know, we know that more diverse teams make better products, have better results. So we want the genetic flourishing of all humanity, all the Americans, all the people of the world in on making these products, especially as we move to AI and data science. These are very powerful. We don't want to write this discrimination, racism, ageism, sexism uh, into, uh, into our algorithms, which is what can happen very easily if we don't nip this stuff in the bud as it appears. Nip it in the bud, fire the, the fascism is strong with this one. She's like really something and it's all with the smiley, the American team, the American team, but not, you're not on the American team if you disagree with her. Just, just amazing. And you know, they're putting this into play in a wider range. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And I will talk about why I feel there's some good news, a pony buried at the bottom of the horse dung here. But first, let me talk about this.